Sweet Reality Kenya TV back with a interview with the executive director Kenya Alliance for Advancement of Children Timothy Ekesa. This is part 3 of our interview and the last bit of the interview. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please take a moment and just do so. Uh, uh, very exciting success stories of your work, Bona director. Those are just some of the few that I'm mentioning to you, but one thing I can tell you that some of the key young youth people we have in the country who are moving the country, majority of them are young people I worked with. They are young people who I saw from primary school. We taught them child rights in school and they came up to be very influential young people. One of the youth we have in this country who has been a youth coordinator in Malawi, a youth coordinator in, in, in uh, World Vision, he, she actually went through our program. Right now, the person in charge of Red Cross in Northern Kenya is a young person who started working when he was in Form 2. And uh, he keeps on reminding me that uh, I gave him 500 shillings, which enabled him to do his Form 4 exams. And that's what propelled him to actually enter into social sector up to where he is right now. So the examples are many. We can get the young people themselves to even give their testimonies. I have uh, a whole WhatsApp group of uh, child rights defenders. They meet online, they discuss, they share their experiences, and it might be good maybe for you to introduce you to some of them and they can share their stories in person. That would uh, surely be wonderful, Tim. But when we were doing the Omar's Dream project, uh, which we did in Machakos and uh, Kwale counties, um the the concept of india where it was being said that when a child is not in school then he's in child labor did not work for machakos especially kadiani area and kaseve because in kadiani area and kaseve it was a five-year project we actually established that the children go to school full-time but they're also in child labor full-time it was a very interesting scenario because we kept on working with the schools and the schools told us every child comes to school. But the, the, the funny thing we found out in uh, Kadiani is that uh, children wake up very early in the morning to go and sell things at the market uh, up the hill. There's a market that starts very early, actually a market that starts at 6 in the morning. And there's also a market at night. So they wake up very early, go sell uh, tomatoes, onions up to around seven, then run, rush to school. By eight, they're in class. At break time, um, the children uh, go and uh, the boys go to remove the sand from the river. They go fill up one lorry and come back. They are paid 200 shillings. They are at, after tea break, after uh, break time, they're in class up to lunch time. At lunch break again, because they don't have food at home, they again run to go to the river to remove sand and come back at two. And after class in the evening, they again go to remove sand. But one thing is that when they go to remove sand, they are given money. But when they are in class, they are not given money. So with time, the child makes a, a, a choice and says, Oh, I'd rather continue removing sand. I'll get money, which I can go and take home for food, than staying in class. So what we did with Kadiani is that the community realized the school was very far. Why the children were not going for lunch at home because the school was very far. So as a solution, they came up with a community school where children can be able to come and then also started a feeding, bringing food to school so that the children can have food at school. And that sorted the problem that we had of children working and at the same time being in class. When we worked in Kwale, uh, Tiwi area, we realized that many children were not st they were starting school very late because there was no nearby school. The public school was very far. And we worked with the community, what we call uh, community child labor committees. We worked with them and the community came up and said, the best thing we can do is to put up a school for the children. Let us study the ECD for nursery. And um, 10 years down the line, we went back to Tiwi and uh, the, minister, the county government took over the project. During our time, we put up an ECD school. But after that, now they have put up a primary school and they have put up a secondary school. 
in the same area and there already we have some children who we rescued from child labor at that time who are actually in university right now so there are many success stories we can share as we wind up Bwana Ekesa, uh, kindly tell us what are your most memorable uh, occasions as a child uh, rights defender uh, but I say I have so many memorable events if I started enlisting them over my over uh, close to 30 years I don't think we'll have time for it but a few I can remember one when we managed to influence uh, the UN committee on the rest of the child to have a space for children to me that was one of the big things that happened at the international level the second thing I also participated in the NGO DPI conference in New York and uh, when I was there I realized I was the young person yet in my from home I'm the oldest person I go to New York for those meetings every year I challenged them and told them can I have the young people to come and run a midday workshop a midday workshop is these workshops where people go for lunch and those who don't want to eat they can come and listen I lobbied very well mobilized very well and uh, that meeting I got a girl from Kenya I, I got my partner from Latin America to get a boy from Latin America, a few American children and the Kenyans who are studying there. And we ran a workshop on why we should get young people to join the UN. And at the end of that workshop, a resolution was made by the UN that of all the delegates that go to the UN, at least of the five delegates, one must be below 35 years. To me, that was something that we achieved at the international level. At the local level, there are many. Local level, right now we have a retinue of young youth who actually advocate for child rights. There are young people who have come together who raise money for poor children using their own resources. Last time I talked to them two years ago, they had raised 400,000 children who were in the charity clubs who took up the movement and what they are doing right now. The fourth one. The Kenya government has taken over child participation and has prioritized it and now the views of children are being sought in every in every situation number three I'm so happy that many of the partners now have mainstreamed child participation in all their work how did you decide to join this organization I joined the organization as an information officer when I finished my first degree in communication from the State University and uh, I simply had joined the organization because I wanted to help document what work they do but while I was an officer I realized I started learning more about children I started seeing gaining a lot of interest in what goes around children it's an area where I had never explored I had done social work in university as my minor degree but I never it had never crossed my mind that it's such a big area. And um, learning from the organization, I was a, we were hired two of us straight to start this organization I, by my former boss, Joyce Zumbima, a very eloquent lady and uh, uh, one of the key pillars of child participation and child rights, child protection in this country. She served as a child welfare director for 25 years. She was a very good mentor and uh, a very good uh, person to guide me in issues of child rights then um, I gained interest in just understanding child rights um, then I also added on uh, did a small course in is uh, Israel a diploma course on uh, NGO management and communication and that which was a UNESCO uh, a Galilee College course that opened my whole world into the area of children and I've kept on growing it I've kept on learning I've kept on uh, looking for new opportunities. I have kept on anything I see. I've kept on dreaming. And what I do is that I try to look for unique things that are not being done on the area of children. I learn from other areas. When I went to China in 2018, and uh, Alibaba training, where we were 20 of us from all over the world, I learned new things that are there that I can be able to bring up. Then the year, the year 2000, I was privileged to be on a study tour of the U.S. institutions with other partners from Uganda and Malawi. I learned about how the U.S. is taking care of their children. Remember I told you the U.S. has not signed the CRC? 
I went to the center of exploited children in Alexandria, and that's how I managed to bring home the idea of the helpline in Kenya, which is now one of the biggest things that we have. It's a free toll free number, an NGO that is running it called Childline and the government. It is something which I actually brought from Alexandria. So I've kept on growing and I've kept on expanding my knowledge and I've never stopped expanding my area. It's the close to 30 years, but uh, this is an area that I'm always learning. Um, learning is a daily learning. There are new things that are coming up like online child sexual exploitation is a new area. The whole issue of safeguarding is now a big thorn in the flesh right now. And it's something which I also keep on exposing myself to, sharing my experiences, but also learning. So what I did is that uh, I educated myself more. And I looked for all opportunities to be able to learn more about child rights. Uh, 2013, I managed to go to uh, Rio de Janeiro for conference on uh, World Con third World Conference on Exploitation of Children. It was a learning point for me. I also uh, went to visit uh, municipalities of Sweden and the commons, nine commons in, uh, in Sweden. Uh, the Scandinavian countries have got very good structures of child parts of, of, of uh, bringing up children. It's one of the areas that have got very good uh, structures, which I learned, brought them back home. I happened to go to Finland to give a presentation on child participation in temporary university and also learned, actually met with the Assembly for Children in, uh, in uh, Finland. And Finland has got the best structure of child participation or involving children. So it has been an area of growth and encourage many people in this sector to keep learning. And we never stop learning. We can never know enough about children because the things keep on changing and we need to keep up with the change. We need to come to issues of child rights, issues of child protection, and issues of child participation. Thank you very much. Uh, viewers, that was uh, Executive Director, Kenya Alliance for Advancement of Children. Thank you so much, Banati Mekesa, for visiting Sweet Reality Kenya TV. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Otieno, and uh, I'm so glad to be on your channel. And I look forward again to joining you another time to keep discussing children, our common future. Through the children, we see the world. That is uh, the slogan you'll find on the, uh, the entry of uh, UNICEF office in New York, that the, world, the children allow us to see the world. So let us uh, prioritize children and let us always think about children because uh, they don't remain children forever. They grow into youth and they grow into adults. And if we want a better tomorrow, the best place to focus is the children. Thank you. Asante sana, Banatim Ekesa. I am your presenter, Otieno Isaiah. Till next time, thank you so much.